Hey, I'm Matt Spencer. Welcome to Powerboat Television. You ever feel the need to just get out of Dodge? Well, I did. So I put the rinker on the trailer, headed east, and we're going lake hopping in the land of lakes. With pristine waters, quiet coves, windswept pines, and an overall rugged exterior, these scenes could be anywhere in Canada. But the Land of Lakes is Ontario's own little slice of heaven. Often overshowered by the more popular Muskoka and Kawartha regions, Land of Lakes is unique in its own right. Roughly two hours east of Toronto, getting there is painless, especially when towing a boat. You soon trade four-lane highways for narrow roads that dip and bend, with quaint little towns along the way. We arrived at Kirk Cove Cottages on the shores of Big Gall Lake, which would be our base camp for the next few days, and quickly launched our boat to head out on the water. Joining us on our trip for the day was Rochelle Hardesty from the Land O'Lakes Tourist Association and Kirk Cove Cottages owner Jim Walker and his wife Claire. Right away, Jim pointed out a landmark across the lake. So right outside of Kirk Cove Cottages, we have Pinnacle Point, which is, it looks like an altered man-made state. Possibly some mining that was taking place there. From Pinnacle Point, we continued down the lake, which is 75% crown land. Along the way, we passed loons, a family of mergansers, and even a cove of wild rice. It wasn't long before we passed another landmark with a unique story behind it. The story goes that there was logging back in the day with workhorses, yeah. and they were going across the ice, and it, everything went through. And one of the logs on the on the sled stood up. And it's, it's still there? To, yeah, it's supposed to be. That's 43 feet of water right here. But the fact that it still stands there and we have ice every year, you'd almost think it's a tree, but it's hard to say. Yeah. <laughs> But as the day was getting on, it was time to get back to Kirk Cove, which takes up a quarter mile of Big Gull shoreline and has one, two, and three bedroom cottages. It was beside our cottage that Jim and Claire treated us to a wonderful home-cooked meal. Little did we know that their hospitality would be matched by the entire region. The following morning, it was time to back in the trailer and head out again. What's great about trailer boating in the Land of Lakes is that a new destination awaits you just 15 minutes away. So we got the rinker loaded up and we're set for our next adventure. Our second lake on the trip would be Crotch Lake, which actually neighbors Big Gull to the east. But to get there, we had to head north first, then east, where we would arrive at Land of Lakes Lodge. From here, we trustingly put our rinker in the hands of lodge owner Mal Schnupp, who calmly and expertly guided it down the steep decline and into the water. Mel would be joining us on the tour of Crotch Lake, so he took a moment to describe to us what we would see along the way. One of the things you're going to see is all natural wild shoreline. Uh, there's an abundance of wildlife, but you don't always see it in a shoreline, and what you're not going to see is a lot of cottages and uh, a lot of cabins and furniture. And, uh, you're going to see nature. Crotch Lake is completely made up of crown land, save a small handful of privately owned cottages and two lodges. One of those cottages sits on Colonel Island. This was deeded to a colonel in the British military in the 1800s and remains in the family today. But from here, Crotch Lake was exactly as Mel described it. Quiet shorelines with a few fishermen here and there, most of whom were Mel's guests. You know, one of the benefits of trailer boating sometimes isn't the sights you see in the middle of the lake, it's the hidden treasures you find at the end. On our third day of lake hopping in the Land of Lakes, we were in for a real treat. We dropped the boat in a Maznaw Lake at Smarts Marina, located just north of the town of Cloyne. With everyone in the boat, we headed out to see what the lake had to offer. So we begin the cruise on our third lake here, Maznaw Lake. We're joined by Steve Smart. He's our guide for today. Steve, what can you tell me about Maznaw Lake? Maznaw Lake's been a popular destination spot over the years. Uh, we've got a big, uh, big crowd that comes up here from as far away as, uh, in Ontario anyways, from London and Windsor. 
um, Sarnia. We draw a big, huge uh, American base up here. We've got uh, Bonnacle Provincial Park that I guess is, is a big attractor. It brings in about a quarter of a million people to us over the course of the summer. Uh, Mazna has always been pristine, uh, lots of crown land on the lake, um, a, a very sought after tourist destination for campers and travelers and boaters as well. It's been a hidden jewel for a long time. Um, uh, the Land Lakes Tourist Association has been promoting it uh, heavily over the last few years, which has uh, really perked it up. But um, yeah, it's a place that people really haven't, haven't discovered yet. The lake is about 12 miles long. It's about a mile and a half wide at its widest point. Uh, it features Bon Echo Rock, which is about three quarters of a mile of, of rock that protrudes out of the lake 475 feet from the surface. The lake's 475 feet. Uh, it's the deepest inland lake outside of the Great Lakes, so it's, it's got some really unique characteristics. As we got on plane and started heading towards Mazinaw Rock, the lake was exactly as Steve described. Aside from a small shoal on the eastern shore, Mazinaw is easy to navigate. Basically, stay in the center of the lake and you're fine. Up on the left, we slowed down for a look at Bon Echo Provincial Park. As Steve mentioned, it's a popular spot that attracts people from all over the province. Steve shared with us tales and stories of what the land is and what it used to be. All the while, however, there was something looming over us, towering up in the sky and impossible to ignore. So as we passed the final point, the Narrows came into view, and with it, Bon Echo Rock. You can't really see it in this sunlight. You got the brown patch of the water, yeah. and above it's the next brown patch, and you'll see that sheer face just above it. Yeah. Just to the left and above oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wait, it's just coming into yeah. view now. Yeah. It's it's perceived as the breast of the bird, and you go up a little bit higher, you can see a little curvature of a face of a bird and a beak, and then you can see the striations and the rock coming down. Different angles of sunlight, you can pick that out, and it's a perfect image of a bird. But here's your old Walt Whitman carving in here. Let's go. Now Bonneco Park starts at that rock point on the west shore over there. Encompasses all this shoreline. And then you've got the two north beaches. You know, with 5,000 lakes in the land of lakes, you don't really want to use the term save the best for last, but Maznaw Lake has been pretty darn close. While the rinker's strapped in, ready for the ride home, what an awesome trip. You know, with 5,000 lakes here, you may not hop from lake to lake like we did. You can just pick one. But your boat comes on a trailer for a reason. So put it to use, because after all, the world awaits in Land O'Lakes. Lakes.